Welcome to this video on interpreting the thyroid function blood test. The thyroid gland sits at the front of the neck, made of two lobes. Its function is to produce three hormones that regulate our metabolic rate and calcium levels in the blood. To understand thyroid function tests, we first need a basic understanding of how the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis works. The hypothalamus in the brain will secrete the hormone TRH, which stimulates the pituitary gland, also in the brain, to secrete TSH. TSH will then travel in the blood until it reaches the thyroid gland. TSH stimulates the thyroid to produce T4 and T3, which are the hormones that control the metabolic rate of cells all over our body. This circuit also has a negative feedback loop, which means T4 will have an inhibitory effect on the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, effectively putting on the brakes to their hormone production and resulting in reduced T4 and T3 production. This circuit allows for a relatively consistent level of thyroid hormone production. It's also useful for us when interpreting the thyroid function test, as it allows us to identify which part of the axis might be going wrong. If a patient has high levels of thyroid hormones, we call this hyperthyroidism. Primary hyperthyroidism is when this is directly caused by the thyroid. Because of the inhibitory effect of T4 on TSH production, primary hyperthyroidism causes a low TSH. This can be caused by Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune condition where the body produces antibodies that stimulate the thyroid gland. An additional blood test you can do to help diagnose this is measuring TRAB, which is the antibody. A toxic multinodular goiter, or toxic nodule, can also cause primary hyperthyroidism. Secondary hyperthyroidism is caused by the pituitary gland, secreting excessive TSH. This is most commonly due to a TSH-secreting adenoma. Patients with hyperthyroidism can have a range of unpleasant symptoms. A simple way to understand why these symptoms occur is to imagine what you would feel like if all your cells were working fast, burning through calories and producing heat. This is what's happening in hyperthyroidism. Some more specific symptoms for Graves hyperthyroidism are acropachy, exophthalmus and pretibial myxedema. Management of hyperthyroidism depends on the cause, but includes medications like carbimazole, which reduces thyroid hormone production, radioactive iodine, and thyroidectomy, which is the surgical removal of the thyroid gland. Having low levels of thyroid hormones is called hypothyroidism. Primary hypothyroidism is a problem with the thyroid itself, resulting in a high TSH level due to the negative feedback loop. This can be caused by Hashimoto's disease, which is another autoimmune condition that damages the thyroid. An additional blood test that can help identify Hashimoto's is anti-TPO, but it isn't a specific test and can also be present in Graves' disease. Thyroidogenesis can be a result of congenital abnormality or from surgery. Radiotherapy to the thyroid gland will also reduce its ability to produce T4 and T3. Secondary hypothyroidism is caused by reduced secretion of TSH from the pituitary gland for example, with pituitary tumours, or after surgery on the pituitary gland. Hypothyroidism symptoms are a result of the body's metabolic rate being low. Levothyroxine, which is a synthetic version of T4, can effectively manage hypothyroidism. The patient will likely need to take this for life. Thanks for watching this video on thyroid function tests. Feel free to check out my other videos on blood test interpretation. See you next time.